but in our large sample, those um, limitations were, were largely um, addressed. And what we, what we did with the children in the sample was basically these BI assessments were done by Jerry Kagan and Nancy Snydman. And they measured the children's reactions to unfamiliar people, rooms, objects, and test procedures in a 60-minute battery. Mom was there, so it wasn't confounded by separation anxiety. Um, and the tasks included things like risk room exploration, exposure to novel people and toys, interaction with an adult examiner. The one thing we couldn't really do was peer plays because it's very hard with these, with, with populations of psychiatric patients, you get a very high no-show rate. And so if you double that or quadruple that to try to get peers, it just was very hard. So we, we had to forego that piece of it. Um, but the variables coded included things like proximity to mother and degree of exploration and especially number of spontaneous comments and smiles. And one thing that was nice, having a normal control group, was that we could norm in defining BI, we could look at who actually spoke um, less than 80% of the offspring of normal parents. So we could sort of classify BI in that way. And what we found, um, the rates of behavioral inhibition in the pa ch children of parents from the different diagnostic groups is that it was significantly higher in the um, group of parents with panic and depression. Um, but, and this wasn't accounted for, oddly, by comorbid parental social phobia. Um, but what's more interesting is the association with childhood anxiety disorders. So this is at the first diagnostic wave, we're looking at um, children who had been assessed for inhibition or not, and all we saw at that wave was that they were less likely than others to have disruptive behavior disorders as far as the overall categories of disorders. When we looked at the anxiety disorders, these are the childhood anxiety disorders from dsm 3 R. the only thing we saw that was significant was avoidant disorders. So specifically, what BI was predicting in this sample was social anxiety. Um, when we looked at the adult-like disorders, there was a trend to predict social phobia. And what we did was we combined social phobia and avoidant disorder, called that clinically significant anxiety disorder. And 17% of these children at age six already had either social phobia or avoidant disorder. Um, what was interesting though, now although this isn't a significant interaction, what I've done is divided who were the children of controls and who were the children of parents with panic and or depression. And you see that all of the effect is in the offspring of parents with panic and depression because there were 15 inhibited kids in the control group and they didn't have any social, social anxiety. Um, so that's something that, that continues to make me wonder about where BI is really a risk factor and if it's really a risk factor in children of well parents. Um, at 10 year follow up, we essentially found the same pattern in these children. Um, and again, the only anxiety disorder that was significantly predicted by behavioral inhibition was social anxiety disorder. And if you look at the last bar, there's there any social anxiety disorder that's either social phobia or avoidant disorder, and it's significantly higher in the inhibited children. And what we did was we know that parental depression or parental social phobia has also predicted social anxiety in the children. And so we, this is from a logistic regression equation basically showing that these three things independently predict social phobia in these children. BI predicts it, parental and, uh, major depression predicts it, and parental social phobia predicts it. And why this is significant is that it shows that BI is adding to the prediction of social anxiety disorder above and beyond what you would know just from knowing that the parent had depression or social phobia. So it's really identifying a subgroup within kids already at high risk. Um, we also were able, since it was longitudinal, to look at new onset of social phobia. We took children who at baseline did not have any diagnosis of social phobia, and we looked at who onset anew with social phobia, and that was predicted by behavioral inhibition, and that was also predicted by parental social phobia, again, both independently of each other. Um, but once again, the control kids didn't develop um, the control behavioral inhibited, the kids who were children of controls who had behavioral inhibition didn't develop social anxiety. Again, it's not enough power for a significant interaction, but it's still um, an interesting finding. Um, so just to put the results in context, um, there have been several other, I, I have on this slide two other, but, but Nathan Fox talked yesterday about a third study that basically have found prospective links between behavioral inhibition and social anxiety disorder. Um, and there have also been mixed results as to whether BI is associated with parental panic and mixed results of, as to whether it's associated with parental depression. And there is one interesting prospective study um, 
the CASPI study that found that children inhibited at age three did show higher rates of depression at age 21. So it's possibly, possible if we keep following these children that they may onset with depression, especially since we know that epidemiologically social phobia is a risk factor for onset of depression as well. And there's also a large literature where people give um, concurrent self-report measures to children asking them do you have anxiety disorders or symptoms or do you ha and do you have behavioral inhibition and they find that they're correlated um, and that's kind of it could be puzzling because it looks like BI is predicting all kinds of different anxiety disorders but just to if you think about it when you're sampling from the general population about 12% of kids have behavioral inhibition but when you're sampling from offspring of parents with anxiety and depression We've seen 30% or higher of children may have behavioral inhibition. So what happens is if what you do is you are just picking a sample of kids with inhibition or without inhibition, this group is probably weighted for higher rates of parental psychopathology and may therefore look like it has higher rates of all kinds of anxiety disorder. And in fact, we saw when we looked at the parents of, of Jerry Kagan's sample that he recruited on the basis of child BI that um, a high rate of parents um, had a lifetime, I think it was 50 percent of parents had a lifetime anxiety disorder, either in childhood or in adulthood. So which children are at highest risk for social phobia? Kids who have family history of social phobia or possibly parental major depression or possibly parental other anxiety disorders. Children who already have social anxiety disorder at a young age and children who are behaviorally inhibited. Um, just to say a brief word about parenting, I know that Kathy is going to talk about parenting in much more detail. What we see in the literature as, as far as um, what kinds of parental influences are hypothesized to lead to social phobia or to maintain social phobia in children, it's things like modeling social avoidance, um, expressing to the child fears of negative evaluation. There are attitudes that are sort of generally associated with child psychopathology that include low parental warmth and high criticism. Um, overprotection is associated with anxiety in general, um, control and intrusiveness, and for social phobia, overvaluing opinions of others. Um, there have also been studies suggesting that for anxiety disorders in general, parents tend to facilitate social avoidance. Um, and there's also non-optimal fostering of social interactions. Um, that if you think about it, a, a parent with social phobia might be much less hesitant to go on social outings with the child or to arrange play dates for the child and so the child ends up not having as many opportunities for social interaction. So the implications for treatment are that because parents of anxious children are often anxious themselves, they may be unskilled at helping children manage anxiety and may foster avoidant coping. And even for non-anxious parents, anxious or inhibited children can be challenging. It can be hard to know exactly what to do to parent them. So it can be helpful to teach parents anxiety management strategies that could be helpful to their children.